for the ReCB, the best channel on YouTube. Hello, I am a super scary skeleton, and welcome to the Halloween special. It's not a super scary skeleton. It's me. It was me all along. I was the I was the skeleton. Hey, put the mask back on. Oh, it's it's terrifying. Oh, he's he's got a second mask underneath the first skeleton mask. Oh, it's so scary. Look at look at the scary scary mask underneath the other mask. Oh, it's terrifying. Oh, his face is hideous. Oh, it makes me eyes hurt. Put the mask back on. Oh, oh, oh I don't want to look at him. Oh, my goodness. I can't stand it. I can't stand the look of him. He's a disgusting little rat boy. Oh, put the mask back on. You ugly bastard. Anyway... As I said, welcome to the Halloween special. And today we're going to be having a look at Ghost Stories of North Wales, which should be fun. For this, I bought this book, which is North Wales Ghost Stories. Prepare to be frightened by these terrible tales from North Wales. And this is by a man called Richard Holland. Now, the first thing that is scary about this book is that I paid £5 for it, even though on the back it clearly says free 99 Can you see that there? Free 99 Amazon! God damn it. Let's read some stories. I realise the lights aren't very scary. Uh, Alexa, set all lights to low. That's scary. Are we scary now? I hope so. The first story of the Halloween special is about South Stack Lighthouse near Anglesey. Well, it's in Anglesey. I've been there. It's very nice. On October 25th, 1853, a killer storm descended on Britain. It is remembered as the Royal Charter Storm after one of more than 200 ships it destroyed. The Royal Charter has sailed all the way from Australia and it was almost in sight of its destination of Liverpool when the full blow of the tempest struck it off the east coast of Anglesey. The ship crashed against the rocks and 450 people drowned. The total number of fatalities across the UK numbered more than 800. On that fateful night, Principal Keeper Henry Bowen was on duty, but recognising the seriousness of the situation, Jack Jones decided to go over to the lighthouse and give him a hand. The South Stack is an islet, which, is, which in those days was connected to the main island by an iron bridge. Across this, buffeted by the gales and lashed by rain and raging surf, the brave keeper began to make his way, but he did not get far before a rock torn from the above cliff by the raging wind smashed into his skull. Bowen was not expecting Jones and was astonished and horrified to find him the following morning lying just outside the door to the lighthouse covered in blood. He managed to drag himself thus far, but if he had shouted for help, Bowen would not have been able to hear him for the fury of the storm would have drowned out his cries. Jack Jones died of his injuries three weeks later. Today, occasional odd incidents experienced at South Stack Lighthouse are blamed on the restless spirit of Jack Jones. They include disembodied footsteps, tapping on window glass, and the rattling of the front door by invisible hands. Well, that was a lovely story. Let's go on to another one. This one is called The Drunken Ghost of Plas and Rune. Rune? Plas and Rune. The Honourable Mrs. Greville Nugent was later responsible for designing the gardens at Plas and Rune, but at the time of her adventure she was merely a guest in the house, which was then being used as a holiday home and yet to be occupied permanently. She wrote this. 
In the summer of 1892, I was staying with my friend, the late Lady Strickland, at an old manor house called Plaza Ruin, near Pujueli. I was the only visitor, and one night Lady Strickland and I sat up so late playing cards that it was long past midnight when we prepared to go to bed. In view of what happened, I should mention that the servants of Plaza Ruin, who had all gone to bed long before, slept in another wing, and as they used the back staircase to their rooms, no one but ourselves could possibly be using the front staircase at that hour. The old house was in absolute stillness, and the moonlight lay in the pools of silver on the oak staircase. My bedroom on the first floor faced the landing, and Lady Strickland, who slept on the floor above me, was just in the act of lighting her candle from mine when we heard heavy footsteps coming upstairs from the hall. The steps were slow and hesitating, apparently those of an old man, and they were accompanied by a sound of a laboured breathing, punctuated by various degrees of coughing. Who is that coming upstairs? There was no reply. We looked over the bolster. Bolsters? What's a bolster? We looked over the bolsters. But although the coughing and wheezing came nearer and nearer, we saw no one. By this time, we were too scared to move. Our candlesticks fell to the ground and we clung to each other in the fear of the unknown. The steps paused for a moment beside us as if the unseen owner of the feet had stopped to take a breath. He then continued his upward progress until the coughing gradually died away and we heard no more. I implored my hostess not to go to her bedroom but to share mine or any other on the first floor, but she refused, saying, I have some holy water in my room and with spiritual protection I fear nothing. So ended my ghost story, but some weeks later after my return to England, I received a letter from Lady Strickland. After you left Plaza Ruin, she wrote, I made cautious inquiries in the neighbourhood, and imagine what I've discovered. It appears at the end of the last century, the manor house was occupied by a, an old reprobate squire who drank himself to death and whose deathbed horrors seem to have been something unthinkable. It is said that his earthbound spirit occasionally revisits his home, vainly trying to obtain some gratification for his ceaseless thirst. So we were evidently favoured with one of his periodical returns. This explanation interested me greatly, but let me admit, I am thankful I never saw but only heard what would doubtlessly have been a very dreadful physic phenomena had it been permitted to materialise. As far as is known, this is the last time this eerie manifestation has been heard. But then, of course, the house is no longer lived in. Perhaps the drunken squire's sick spirit still drags itself painfully through its former home. Unheard. Now that is another fantastic ghost story. I'm sure you'll agree. Now there is one more tale to tell this evening. Uh, I originally was going to tell the tale of the ghostly Roman army of Nantafree Forest. But there isn't too much information about this story. Uh, on the interwebs, so I was going to get in touch with Mr. Richard Holland, who wrote this book, as he seems to be the expert, to see if he knew anything else. But when I went to search for Mr. Holland, I instead found this. You join me now at the laptop, where I found this news article. A ghost book's author was caught with thousands of indecent images of children and photos of horse bestiality after his activities were exposed by Canadian police. Richard Holland, who had written books including Haunted Whales, was caught when in a raid in T uh, Toronto uncovered details of his illegal purchases. The court was told that his professional life was now in tatters after he admitted his dirty secret, with clients shunning him, contracts being cancelled and his savings depleted. 
Holland 51 of Ty Nestig Wernerfield near Mould was spared an immediate jail term partially because he admitted that he had a problem and was willing to admit it. So let this be my final message to you all on this Halloween-ish night. Do not fear the skeleton men or the ghost and ghouls as they are not the real monsters in this world. The real monsters have thousands of illicit photographs on their computer, even ones with horses in. It's quite weird. Watch out for them. That is all. Happy Halloween. Stay safe. Don't have nightmares. And goodbye. <laughs>